Okay, friends. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So, yes, today, I don't know. I almost said by popular demand, but it's not really by popular demand. It's interesting. Uh, these, these Friday, yeah, by Yusela's demand, <laughs> by Friday's a request. She was very nice. Um, the, the, the sort of stress relief Friday is interesting. Lots of people stream them online. Not as many people come to them live, but although four today is not a bad number of four, including me. Um, yeah, if, if the people that say, all right, recovery is, you know, doesn't appeal to me, or I, it's, it's, you know, that they're, they're not as inclined to come. They're like, I need something more intense. And, and the thing is that obviously I offer three more, three intense classes a week. So there's a problem there. But I'd also say that this work amplifies the results that you get from uh, the intense stuff that you do. So uh, I liken it to the idea of a pendulum, right? So if you want to go really far out this way, it actually behooves you to also go far out this way, right? If I'm pushing a child on the swing and I'm trying to get them to go high this way, it does not help me to catch them and stop them and then generate this force from complete inertia, right? It, it's much easier to let them swing back and then give them a little push on the way, have them swing back and push on the way. So if you think of this as the intense stuff, you wanna get stronger, fitter, leaner, whatever it is, you have to understand that the further you go, you wanna go that way, the further you have to go this way, right? The further you have to go this way. And that's sort of recovery, uh, mobility, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system, right? Out here is our sympathetic response. Out here is our parasympathetic response, right? So many people that I work with who are like, you know, higher level and really trying to push, you know, the idea I really need to actually pull the reins back and say, you need to do less of this stuff. In order to get better at this, counterintuitively, you need to do less of it, you need to do more of this. So anyway, I'm preaching the choir here because you people are actually here enjoying this, but that's the general look. If there's any part of you that says, gosh, I really should be working hard every single day of the week or more days of the week as opposed to working, doing this easy stuff, easier stuff. Understand you get better at the hard stuff by doing this stuff. It's the yin and the yang. They affect one another. They amplify and um, support one another, right? Okay, so that's my, here ended my lesson here. So thanks for showing up today. Um, so let's start on the, on the mat, shall we? Let's start on the mat, real easy. I will just kind of see how we are. Go ahead into an all fours position. And take a moment to settle into this quadruped kind of thing. You want to feel that your hips are directly above your knees and that your shoulders are directly above your hands, right? And this kind of precision is a great way to start when we're doing more of a recovery. Yeah, so go ahead and begin this easy movement of arching and rounding the spine. Let's just see how the back is. As I've said, my patient, since my little crack up in my car accident, I have a little bit of back pain here and there. And I'm just working with it. You know, I'm not overly concerned about it, but I'm aware of it. In terms of the beginning of workout, I check in with it. I see kind of how it's doing. So right now, if I'd be honest, I could just blast through, right? I'm going to be honest. I mean, okay, I got a little something right there, and I actually got a little something there in my neck. So I'm going to encourage you, if you have any kind of um, feeling of challenges in your back, to, to just work with them, right? Don't insist. Don't force anything. It is by not forcing, again, counterintuitively, that you get better results, right? not by forcing the body to do what it clearly doesn't want to do. It's by being nice and doing more of a coaxing kind of thing. All right. So let's bring the back into a neutral position and then shift the hips. Ah, yes. A little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. And can you tell I need this today? It's ready for my race. So it's all very intense. And so it's a little bit of some of this work. And this, by the way, my soul workout. So we're shifting the hips left and right, and we are sitting toward the heels. This should elicit a really nice stretch through the glutes. Oh, yeah, these big old muscles. Take your time as you go left to right. 
find that easy stretch in your side. Come back to the center. Now, think about your upper back, your upper spine. Now, some people have wrist pain, in which case I would encourage you to work with a fist, all right? So I'm going to work with a fist a little bit just to, just to uh, include that idea. And I'm going to draw my shoulder blades back and together. And then I'm going to push my mid-back mid up and down. And then I'm going to repeat that. Chest goes down. Chest goes up and back. I'm going to repeat that. That easy. Better apart. I'm really mobilizing through that upper back. Really encouraging that thoracic spine to move. All right, good. Now let's take the hands forward. You want about a hand's width between your hands. And you want to sit back toward the heels and press your chest toward the floor. Here we're going to go into a kind of child pose. I don't know, I never certified yoga like uh, a number of people on this Zoom call. So I definitely do not have the full vocabulary here, but I, in child's pose, I really like this kind of stretch along my lats, underneath my armpits. There's this long stretch here between the hands. Oh, it's also really nice to relief of the lower back here. So breathe into this, just place your forehead on the floor. And take some breaths. All right, good. Oh, yeah, let's come back. Now, let's come back to a little bit of arch and round, but we're going to do um, our side movement now as well. So let's start with the side movement. Take your legs. All I want you to do is take your feet and swing them over to the right and then over to the left. Be really gentle with yourself. So don't do anything else just yet. Now, you know when you do this, that the pelvis is naturally going to do this little, um, what do I call it, kind of lateral shift, right? It's kind of like what you do if you were what, climbing a big set of stairs or something. Your pelvis would lift on one side and drop on the other, right? Now, add to that, look over your shoulder at your foot when it comes. So if, I, if my legs are to the left, I'm going to look over my left shoulder. Legs are to the right, I'm going to look over my right shoulder. Now, again, respect your boundaries, right? So right now, I'm like, okay, my lower back is not in love with this movement. I'm going to limit this, right? I'm not going to go, all right, look how far I can go, folks. So I'm going to go just as far as I can go on that side. And just as far as I can go on that side, I'm still getting benefit. By just limiting my range of motion. So now we've done this up and down, we've done this left and right. Let's see if we can connect it. Okay. So it's a little little more challenging. And let's see if we can connect it without moving the feet. So what I want you to do is round the spine up, look between your legs, as if you're a dog looking at a tail that's between your legs. And then look over to the left and swing your tail to the left. And then look up. And think of arching your tail up and over, almost over your head, and then over to the right. Same thing, look at the tail to the right, and then between your legs. And see if you can connect those, ah, those points all the way around, round it up. And again, listen, again, I'm going to limit my range of motion. I'm not going to go into anything extreme. I'm going to keep it small. I'm going to keep it kind of tight and any sense of pain. I am going to back on. Right? That is the way, and I'll go the other way. That is the way to get yourself to loosen up. Not by forcing, but by asking the question that goes to the open door. Not banging on the locked door. Okay? Very good. Very good. Okay. Ah, let's leave that alone. Let's come into uh, onto our backs. We got a we got an extra person coming in, I'll say hello to you when I can see who you are. So come on to the back for a moment. Let's just take a second there. I would encourage on this to go ahead and bend your legs. Have your, your, your feet flat and your legs bent. And just rest your arms. I've got mine kind of out to the side. You can go by your side if you like. So if you're falling in my eye, you can this All right. So I'm just going to pause there for a moment. 
and just enjoy and feel my body settling into the floor. It's as if the floor is coming up to support you. Think of that ground or that floor coming up to support you. See if you can breathe without changing your breath, right? Observe how you breathe without making any conscious or unconscious um, uh, changes in that breath pattern. So either in depth, the duration, or the tempo. Uh, see if you can just let yourself breathe and observe for a moment. Now, the inhale is always associated with, remember I talked about the pendulum. The inhale is associated with that sympathetic drive. So that's the fight or flight, that's the stress, that's the hard work. And the exhale is always associated with the parasympathetic drive. That's for rest and relaxation. And that's the place we wanna go now. So don't change anything, but just bring a little more attention to that exhale, that slow exhale. And imagine as you let that breath out, that the tension in your body, whether it's around your eyes, your jaw, your mouth, your chest, all that tension is actually leaving, right? So if you had an analog little dial, as you exhale, and that dial measures the tension in your body, as you exhale, that dial is actually going down and down. All right, now let's do a little trick here. Go ahead and extend a little trick. Go ahead and extend your legs out, flat on the ground. And what I want you to do is lift your head up and just look at your feet and then lower back. Let's do that a couple of times, lifting your head up as if to look at your feet and just feel that action. All right, now take your hands. You can interlace, interlace them in a non-habitual way. So if I usually interlace my hands, and this is true of me, and my left thumb is on top of my right thumb, left index finger on top of my right, and same all the way down, I'm going to unflap. So my right thumb is on top of my left thumb. My right index finger is on top of my index and the same one way down. So it's a little shift like this. You see that? So like this. So I'm interlacing my hands in a non habitual way. I'm taking my hands and I'm putting them behind my head. Oh, yeah. See how difficult markers this workout is? So what we're going to do now is we're going to lift the head just a little tiny bit off the floor. Easy lift of the head and not really far. You just lift a little bit. Fully rest between each one. Relax the jaw. Allow the breath to be very simple and light as you lift. It's a very slow move. The idea is to really let yourself do less and less. Less and less. Usually when we work out, we think, how much more can I do? Here we think, how much less can I do? Good. Now, take your hands away. Let your head rest on the floor. Extend your legs out. Rest for a moment. Observe the quality of your rest. Contact with the floor. Breath moving in and out. Very simple. Okay. Come back to this movement with the legs bent. Take the right hand, place it behind your head so that your head is fully supported by your hand. So there's no effort through the neck at all. Take your left hand and reach in front of your right knee. Hold my right knee. 
right foot has to lift off the floor. Now, I'm going to lift my head off the floor just using my right hand. And at the same time that I do that, I'm going to draw my knee a little bit closer to my elbow. Notice I said a little bit closer. I did not say touch your elbow to your knee. No, I did not say that. Not interested in touching your elbow to me. I'm interested in a little bit of easy movement. Relax your jaw. Relax your head fully into your hand. So notice my movement. I mean, you don't have to look at me. I don't care. But make the movement very small, very slow. Right? Some people immediately go to, "Oh, we want to touch." Nope. Don't just want to move a little bit and observe how your back changes its contact. Good. Now release your knee. Take your hand out and rest your head and your leg on the floor. Let's call it Roll your head. Very gentle, very small movement. Now take your left hand, put your left hand behind your head. So your head is fully relaxed. There's no effort in your neck. The head is fully, head and neck are fully relaxed onto your hand. Take your right hand, take hold of your left knee. Again, I, I always hesitate to model these movements because I really want you to find them yourself. But you know, there's so there's so much a history of modeling movement during exercise that I, I do it anyway. But you know, it's hard to look at someone while you're doing these movements. So I would encourage you to just find them on your own, unless you're really confused about what they're doing. So the right hand is holding the left knee. Your left hand is behind your head. I want you to lift your head a small amount and draw your left knee towards your left. And I want you to do less and less work each time you move. I want that head to be fully relaxed into the hand each time. Okay, pause for a second, but stay with your hand on your knee and your hand underneath your head. Now we're going to change things. Keep hold of your knee and Push your left foot toward the floor. As you do that, lift your head a little bit off the floor. Right? So now we have a different movement that the knee and the elbow, you want to keep them the same distance apart. So let's say my, if, I had a, if I had a little stick between my left knee and my left elbow, and I drew my left foot toward the floor. I want to maintain that same distance. So as my left foot travels toward the floor, my head is going to lift a little bit. Different relationship. Now, release your knee, take your hand away, extend your legs out, and just take a little pause. Now, if you're like me, you may be feeling a greater sense of release into the floor. I would say I'm feeling some more openness in my ribs. My hip flexors feel like they're more open and relaxed. My feet are more splayed out to the side. I feel a greater sense of release into the floor just from doing those little movements. So the question is what? So I guess what that reveals is that when we lie down on the floor, and we think we are fully relaxed, we actually are not. We actually still have the Feldman price we call residual parasitic tension. So if we have that residual parasitic tension when we lie on the floor and we tell ourselves I'm completely relaxed, how much tension do we have when we walk around going around the house? How much more effort are we exerting as we go about those activities? And how much easier could our everyday lives be if we brought a little more awareness to it, we brought some of this idea of self-observation into our daily lives. 
an interesting rhetorical question. So go ahead and stand your legs. Now, let's change things around. Take your right hand and put it behind your head. Now, take your left hand and put it on your left knee. Now, let's do this. Bring your right elbow and your left knee toward one another. So now that's asking something different of your ribs and of your back and of your whole physiology to work on this diagonal. So good, that's bringing the elbow and the knee toward one another. Let's do the other version where the foot moves toward the floor while we're still holding our knee and we lift the right elbow. So now we've got that stick again, right? That stick that is maintaining the same distance between the right elbow and the left knee. So as my right, excuse me, left foot travels toward the floor, my right elbow uh, moves toward this, uh, my, I should say I lift my head, my head up. My head goes up. Can you relax your jaw as you do this? Can you relax your breath as you do this? All right. Good. Let's take the hand away. Relax. Leave the, leave the knee alone. Draw the arms just to the floor again and just rest for a second. So there's a new quality, a new depth of rest. I'm not saying we're falling asleep here, but there's a new sense. See if you could picture that, that tension gauge, right? That you had and you checked in with before. Where's the tension gauge at now? I would say in my own physiology, it's a good 25, 30%. So let's take the right hand, excuse me. Yeah, let's take the left hand behind the head. And then let's take the right hand and place it in front of the right knee. So again, we have got this diagonal relationship, but just the opposite diagonal. So now I'm gonna lift my head and I'm going to draw my elbow toward my knee and my knee toward my elbow. This lovely hummingbird that always visits right around now. Out right now. There he is. All right. So I'm going to draw my elbow and knee toward one another. Just a little bit. Closing that distance. And now I'm going to draw my foot toward the floor and I'm going to lift my head. Now, what's important when I do that is I do not add a lot of strain, right? If all of a sudden I start doing that and I go, I can't speak or I can't breathe properly, I'm working a little too hard. I want the movement of that knee to facilitate the movement of my head. All right, we're working on this diagonal. Hold on. Speed up. So keep going. Knee and elbow, same distance apart. Lift the head a little bit. Can the foot almost reach the floor? Is that possible? Maybe. Maybe not. All right, good. Let's leave it alone. Bring the hand out. Bring the arms to the sides. Extend your legs fully onto the ground. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. How is your sense of resting? Rotate your head a little bit. Which side is it easier to turn your head to? All right, bring your arms up overhead. Let's do just a little bit of easy extension. We, we, we've been sort of closing the front of the rib cage. Now let's do the opposite. Let's extend and open the rib cage a little bit. Ah, extend and open the lats a little bit. Give yourself, oh yeah, a chance to extend, oh, lengthen. 
little bit of a yawn stretch here. As I stretch overhead, I'm gonna push a leg downward and I'm gonna open along my right side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, extending my left arm and I'm gonna push my left foot down, opening along my, my left side. Now extending left leg out and right arm out. Right leg out, arm out. Oh, that's a great some leg in those diagonals. Oh, yes. Movement in the hips. It's all very good. All right. Very nice, everybody. Bring the legs to standing again. So just a little bit of rotation. Bring the knees to the left and to the right. Respecting your limits again. So I'm working with some limitations today. And so I'm definitely not gonna go very far to my right with my knee. And I'm not gonna terribly far to my left with my head. You can very, very easily do that. You, you want to feel, you never want to feel like you're banging up against the limits of the pain. That's what most people do. You want to kind of leave a possibility open. Don't go far. You don't just keep on establishing or reinforcing this idea, oh, I've got pain, I can't go, I can't do more, I wish I could do more. Let's move into pain and make it happen. Let's hurt ourselves some more and beat ourselves up for being injured. No, let's not do that. Okay? Bring both knees uh, up toward your uh, chest. Take hold of the front of the knees. Now, roll up a little bit. So let, let, let the, let the uh, knees move away and the feet move toward the floor and let the head lift just a little bit. And then bring the knees the chest. Same thing, repeat that. Let the legs extend and let the spine just peel off the ground one vertebra at a time. If it's more comfortable, you can hold the, the, the backs of your knees, right? So put your hands in the fold of the knees and extend. And when you do that, you might feel yourself moving toward a sitting position. And you come all the way up to sitting from that lying down position. Now, you very well might be able to do it with a little momentum, right? But I'm not really interested in that, right? We all could probably go, whoop, we can use a, lot of, a little bit of momentum. I want to see if we can do it without momentum. So hold the backs of the legs, extend, let the arms be long, let that pull your head, upper back off the floor, and see if you can come up without momentum, just gently. And then see if you can do the same, a little more challenging, going backwards. So lower yourself without falling to the floor. Can we do that? Ah, yes. If you've accomplished it with your hands in the folds of your knees, see if you can do it in the fronts of your knees. A little more challenging. Ah, uh, yeah. A little touch of momentum there for me. And let's see if we can do it going back. Going slowly, rolling back onto the back, working with this uh, really uh, extension and flexion of the spine. Now, just keep playing with that. Keep playing with that. Let the arms lengthen. Let that pull your spine up off the floor one little bit at a time. I'm not even putting my feet down, so I want to see if I can find that controlled lowering. All right, now wherever you are with that, go ahead and leave it alone. Have the feet stand. Uh, just rest on the floor for a moment. Come back to this easy rotation of the spine left and right. Let the head rotate the opposite of the knee. And now it's interesting. I'm feeling like, all right, I can actually get my head a little further than before just by virtue of that spinal flexion. Nice. All right. So let's do this. Let's slowly roll onto one side. Bring yourself up to a sitting position. Ah, yes, get your knee underneath you. Slowly come to standing. That's nice. And just see how it is to stand. There's Lisa Harris. Who else is here? I think it's, uh... oh, Tamara's here. Oh, Tamara, excuse me. Tamara's here. Isela, yes. Everyone else. Oh, and Patricia's here. Patricia, thanks for enduring a, uh, a lovely, 
R and R class. So stand for a moment. Stand for a moment and just see how you are now standing. I know we got a, we got a bunch of hard chargers in here. We got a lot of people who like to work out intensely, but um, hopefully you will feel now a little more sense of ease, a little more sense of balance. Right? This isn't voodoo, right? We didn't meditate. We didn't do a burnt offering to the goddess Shiva. We just lay on the floor and observed ourselves. Right? So feel what effect that is. I would say for me. I mean, who cares about what it is for me, but it's like just some ideas. You know, I feel like everything's a little suppler, it's a little looser, right? I feel more like, you know, instead of feeling like a rigid stone, a block, I feel more like someone could jostle into me and I wouldn't fall down. I would just kind of flow. I don't know if you feel that, but I definitely feel that. So take a moment to just circle the hips and see if you can, I'm not really interested in stretching here, but in feeling the way that the body moves, right? the different ways in which the shoulders move and the different ways in which the spine moves. It might be different from the way you usually uh, articulate these movements, right? Go the other way. And I would say, I, don't know, I still have the various pains that I started with, but in general, I feel better. I feel like I'm not squeezing and holding, feeling like I'm, I'm in a place where those places of challenge can kind of move despite the fact that they are challenged. That makes sense to me. And I'm just telling you my experience because it might help to illuminate what's going on with you. If you're like, I don't feel anything different, maybe that kind of thing will help you. Let's go shoulder, shoulder, moving the shoulders back. But again, the idea in this, Articulation of your body is not so much to stretch as it is to just feel how your body's different. Just checking it out. How are you different now when you first started? Let's go forward with those shoulders. Two. 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 And if you're somebody like me, who likes to exert a lot of effort all the time, just feel how little effort you can get away with in standing and in moving. Let's do some arm circles. Let's do opposite direction. Now, again, usually I, I encourage you to work with a kind of yang energy to extend that key out. I want you to go a little softer now, take it up and over. And just enjoy a little bit. Do this in a way that you would do it if you were going to say, I'm gonna circle my arms for three hours, <laughs> which sounds kind of unpleasant. But what I'm saying is like, we wanna do it in a way that is effortless, right? Has almost no muscular tension. So maybe we wanna release a little bit when you come around, just release. Ah. Release. release, good. And let's go the other way, take it up and then release it down. Sit over. Good. Right. Very nice. Good. Um, let's play around a little bit with the ankles. Why not? So let's just tilt the ankles. Now, again, we're, 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 since we're coming off of this Feldenkrais movement, don't jump to 100%. Again, often in warm ups, I'm like, okay, go all the way, see how far you can go. I think 60%. I think 60%, 75%. Right? Not as hard as you can, but just a little bit, just a little bit of movement, right? Drop your breath into your stomach. I'm thinking, all right, I'm, I'm squeezing my stomach like I have to, I don't know, I'm doing a photo shoot and I'm trying to get a six pack. No, I just want that belly to relax and drop that breath low in the spine. Good. Now let's do this one. Roll across a foot. It's gonna feel good to kind of articulate those toes backward. That flexion, take your time. Take your time. You've done a really nice job in this in this section, just dialing up the awareness of your whole self. So let that continue through these movements. Let's go the other direction. Nice. Let's switch to the other foot. Circle the foot to the inside. Nice that foot. And circle your foot to the outside. Being easy with yourself, staying easy with yourself. Right. Very nice, good. Imaginary pencil up, top of the head. Draw a circle on the sky. 
Let your jaw relax. Let your face relax. Let your eyes relax. Not interested in seeing how far you can go. Interested in seeing how easy you can make it. Right? Go the other way. Take it around. Breathe. Okay. Good. All right. Now, we have like a couple minutes here. I want to. I want to do one last thing. So. Fix your eyes on something across the room. Uh, I would say don't make it your computer screen. Make it, you know, I'm looking at a leaf across my garden or in my backyard. You can do a spot on the wall, something like that, but a very specific point, okay? Now, keeping your eyes fixed on that point, shake your head or uh, just bring your head left and right like you're saying no, right? So the eyes are fixed on that one point and floating. Don't strain the eyes, but keep them fixed on that one point as you sort of say. Now, same thing, but now nod your head. Yes, as you're looking at that one point, make the movement of the eyes as smooth as you can. All right, keep your eyes fixed on that point. And now make a circle with your head, keeping your eyes fixed on that one point. As you work, and relax your breath, Relax your shoulders, keep your knees a little bit soft. Let's go the other direction with that circle. We're just circling. All right, good. Now, adding to the trick a little bit, the last 30 seconds or a minute here, keep your eyes fixed on that point. Now walk toward the point and nod your head yes, keeping your eyes fixed on that point. So I'm, as you see, I'm walking off camera. You can do the same thing now. Walk backward, keeping your eyes fixed on that point and nodding your head up and down. Surprisingly, not so easy. Okay, good. Come back to the point you started. Now, begin bringing the head into that, that left and right thing, keeping your head, keeping your eyes fixed on that spot. So now we're turning the head left and right. We're moving toward that spot, eyes fixed on that leaf or that spot on the wall. And now the most difficult is walking backward, keeping your eyes fixed on that spot and shaking your head no, all right? So see how smooth we can do that. All right, we will save the circular movement for another time. If you wanna do that on your own, you totally can, but uh, we're just about out of time here. So let's just take a moment here, bring the feet together, reach the arms up overhead. Nice easy breath in, palms together at the top. Now go ahead, drag the hands right down front, or front of the chest, close your eyes, probably already in this nicely centered place, but just relax into that, into that place just for a moment. Keep your spine tall. Feel that, that sense of suppleness through the whole spine, through the whole system, dropping the shoulders. Feel the pulse points between your fingertips. Now, however that was for you, just give yourself a little metaphorical pat on the back for coming here and showing up for yourself not necessarily emphasizing the idea of organ. How hard can we work, but emphasizing the idea of how much efficiency and ease can we bring into our uh, bodies and our lives this morning? Pretty awesome. Go ahead and take the arms down by your sides. Thanks very much for being here. I appreciate you showing up for this. We got Yusela, we got Tamar uh, Tamara, we got Elizabeth, Lisa Harris, Patricia, Wolf Drive Martial Arts. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great Friday. We'll see you tomorrow and be safe and have a nice, easeful Friday. See you soon. Bye.